I remember last year, right around now in January, I saw a church somewhere, some city, and had a big sign out in front, and it said, whoever's praying for snow, you can stop it now. But that's not the case this year, is it? Who wants snow? You want an abundance of No, oh, you kids. Oh, that's why I don't like kids. Oh, they want snow. Oh, we'll get it February and March, right? So how many times when we go to our beautiful Catholic Mass, every time we go to Holy Mass, we hear the words from this weekend's Gospel where John said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And if I asked 10 Catholics, what does that mean? Most of them would say, well, it means Jesus is, is the little lamb, the innocent lamb of God. Well, that's true, but there's more to it than that, a lot more. And a lot of it is significant. It's at the heart of our faith and how we appreciate who Jesus is in our life of faith. John the Baptist, first of all, grew up with his father, Zechariah, who was a priest at the temple in Jerusalem. So John saw his father doing his priestly duty. There were many sacrifices in the Jewish religion at the temple, doves and turtle doves and goats and lambs on the wood altar of the great temple. You remember when Mary and Joseph brought the child to dedicate him to God after his birth, the gospel said they offered two turtle doves as a sacrifice. So John grew up seeing his father doing his priestly duty with all these sacrifices of beasts and animals at the temple. It was part of the old Jewish religion that those that were sacrificed would bring mercy and God's favor to the people. And John the Baptist had heard, he knew the scriptures of the Jewish people where it said the Messiah would come, the Savior, and he would be led like a lamb to the slaughter. He would suffer. Of course, Jesus was led to the cross. So when John is baptizing Jesus, he saw him at the bank of the Jordan River that day, and John might have seen up in the hills, up over there, he might have seen some shepherds who were driving some sheep to the temple in Jerusalem. They would wear a red ribbon about their neck. That means they were destined for the altar of sacrifice. But John doesn't point to them. He points to Yeshua, Jesus, who was at the riverbank. And he says, behold, there is the Lamb of God who will take away the sin of the world. John doesn't say, there's the Savior, there's the healer, there's the teacher. He says, no, there is the Lamb of God. So it's more than just the innocence of our blessed Lord when, he, when we say the Lamb of God. It really has to do with the one that is sacrificed. One has to be sacrificed. Something has to go so that something better can arrive or take place or happen. And so it's really at the heart of our faith. The reason it's worth thinking about on this weekend is there's a lot of people today of different ages who will say, yes, I love the Lord. I love Jesus. He was a good guy, a great prophet, a wonderful teacher, a healer. He made life better, but I mean, you know, there's other people that were good that have come along in history. Oh, no, let's not fall for that. He is the Lamb of God, the Son of God, the Savior, Jesus of Nazareth, our blessed Lord. Don't fall for that line. Oh, just another very good person in history. No such thing. Much more than that. And I also think nowadays... We kind of, well, we, we forget about the importance of sacrifice in our faith as we live it out day by day, our ordinary living. You know, nowadays we get pretty comfortable in our earthly nest. And, you know, well, a good parent understands what it is to sacrifice something of yourself for the good of the kids, naturally, a teacher will sacrifice 
their free time or whatever, their resources for the good of their students. But around today, you hate to say it, but maybe with our young people a little bit, this idea of, hey, it's good to sacrifice. I give something of me so that you can be better. When I meet with couples who are looking forward to being married, I'm so happy they've chosen to bless their marriage before the altar. There are a lot of them that don't do that, you know. They play house, you know what I mean? But when the, com the ones come to get married, I'll say, well, why do you want to marry each other? Well, because, you know, he's got everything I need. She's got everything I need. But I don't hear him saying, I'm looking forward to, you know, giving of myself making sacrifices for the good of, of our love, our marriage, our family. I made a resolution, the only New Year's resolution I made this year. I'm going to give every couple that I'm preparing for marriage, I'm giving them as a gift for me a small crucifix, which is a cross with the body of our Lord upon it. And I'm going to tell them, when you have your apartment, your house, <laughs> which they already have, but I'm going to say, you know, near your 85-inch flat-screen high-definition TV on the wall, somewhere find a place on the wall for a crucifix to remember that sacrifice is part of love. The greater the love, the more there is something that is sacrificed. And so Christ sacrificed upon the cross, and there came forth an outpouring of love and pardon and peace and mercy. This idea of Jesus as the Lamb of God, at the end of the gospel, John says, this truly is the Son of God. Let's not fall for this Jesus being just a really good guy among others. And let's remember how essential for the life of faith is to include this idea of Sacrifice, sacrifice. So that's tough today for a lot of us of different ages where we just want to be comfortable and secure and sometimes we just try to avoid sacrificing anything for the good of the parish, the church, our loved ones, where we are in our life. So I think these are worthy thoughts to reflect on as we hear the beautiful gospel of John called the baptizer our Lord coming toward him at the Jordan River, and this beautiful title, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Someone was sacrificed so that many could find a great divine love, God's love through Christ Jesus. On the cross, there is a rupture. Our Lord's heart is ruptured with a lance. And then there's a rapture, an outpouring of great love and mercy that reaches to me and you every day. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.